Hello and welcome to Buildings of Tomorrow. My name is John Lester and in today's episode we are talking about X as a service and how X as a service can deliver additional functionality and scope for our industry. I'm joined today by Dave Hopping, who is the CEO of our Regional Solutions and Services Division at Siemens Smart Infrastructure. Dave, thanks for joining us. Pleasure to be here. I look forward to the discussion. Me as well. I'm excited. Uh, welcome back. We've had a, a, a previous conversation uh, where we talked about the industry and the differences between uh, you know, a single building and a, and a customer that has a lot. Today, I'd like to talk about X as a service because this is a topic that is becoming a, a real driver within our industry. And behind it, there are a lot of expectations about what, why is this the solution to go through. But let's start at the very beginning. What is X as a service? Yeah, thanks for having me again. And I'm, I, I'm glad you, we have this chance to talk about this topic because this is huge for us, especially running a uh, solutions service business. X as a service is right in our uh, sweet spot. But basically what is happening, um, there's two things that's happening in the world. Number one is technology is allowing and enabling people to deploy solutions via cloud infrastructure. So you're able to um, really deploy and sell solutions localized through a service type business model. And then the second is just directly, re not related to technology, but it's related to the business model. And that is customers are um, interested in wanting to shift capital cost to operating costs. So CapEx to OpEx. And they're wanting to pay based on usage and based on the value yeah. and not based on, you know, installing some big infrastructure up front. So these two drivers are, are really causing this transformation, but it's really all around consumers and customers paying for a value based on consumption. Right. And does that push us in that direction when we talk to a customer about, you know, our conversation is about outcomes, not about what we install, what is done, but really what's achieved. Absolutely. And by the way, I mean, this goes back in history, my 30 plus years with Siemens. It's what customers buy anyway. Yeah. They buy outcomes, you know, and we just haven't always maybe sometimes sold that way or positioned our equipment that way. Mm -hmm. But um, all customers are looking for an outcome, whether it's asset performance, efficiency, sustainability, you know, um, space and workplace, whatever the, the situation, it's, it's all about out outcomes and usage. Perfect. So X as a service enables us to build, uh, to build offerings and have a different conversation with the market around, around these outcomes, uh, around shifting the, that expectation or that investment from a CapEx to an OpEx. Uh, give us some examples. Like what are the different kinds of, of Xs, let's call it? X as a service that what we know well is, is SaaS, is software as a service, but this is a, a functional technology base. What are some of the Xs for X as a service? I don't know how much time you have. Hey, bring it on. We've got time. The, 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 the reel is running. We won't run out of, uh, we won't run out of tape yeah, for a while. Yeah. But I'll give you some, I'll give you some real, real life examples and, and then we can go deeper, you know, if, you, if, you, if you'd like. Um, one is in the area of uh, employee experience. So we made a couple acquisitions, you know, a number of years ago with Enlightened and Comfy. And um, employers are wanting their employees to have a better work experience. Mm -hmm. Uh, how to find parking, you know, maybe order food, um, you know, uh, reserve a conference room, reserve a desk. This is all about the experience the employees will see, you know, in their in their facilities. And so we we sell, you know, the comfy and the enlightened applications as a service model. Another example would be just in our core business, whether it's in building automation, fire security, we're seeing more and more customers wanting to pay for life safety, wanting to pay for comfort control, wanting to, uh, to, to, to pay for asset performance, but they want to pay based on the outcome. So we have, you know, building automations as a service. We have securities as a service, you know, different types of offerings. We have within our lighted uh, business, we have data as a service. So in lighted sensors connects all this data in the building, it goes into their Amaze platform. And then from that, they're then exporting the data into third-party applications for real-time service. So this is more data as a service, incorporating their, you know, their data. We also have energy as a service. So customers are wanting to pay for energy based on usage and based on performance. Performance can be energy efficiency, performance could be sustainability, decarbonization. So uh, customers are now um, doing big finance projects with us where they're paying for the, the use of that power and they're not paying for the big infrastructure um, up front. We also have um, uh, a digital, you know, as a service or asset performance as a service with our digital services. And we're helping customers improve the life cycle of their assets, improve performance, reducing energy consumption. And once again, the, the KPIs are measured to that outcome. So 
I mean, I could go on and on, but these are some of the areas of as a service that we're seeing deployed in the marketplace and we're deploying today. Yeah, perfect. So effectively anything as a service is, is the, the, the story of the day here. Like as long as the customer is looking to achieve something, as long as they're looking to, to, to reach an outcome, the technology, the, 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 you know, let's call it the assets, the systems that enable that can really be delivered in this business model. Absolutely. And it just and, and for me to summarize, there's three main levers. Number one is technology is enabling it. Mm -hmm. Number two is customers are learning that they can pay for outcomes mm -hmm. and not pay for infrastructure up front. And then it's the shift from CapEx um, to OpEx. To OpEx. Yep. Understand. Now, you mentioned a couple that I would like to dive into a little bit more detail. One was energy as a service, but one that, um, that I hear around the industry every now and then is flexibility as a service. What is flexibility as a service? Yeah, well, it's, it, it's really connected together, but it's it's enabling the customer to combine different um, energy systems into one where they're maximizing and or they're lowering their cost of energy, but they're maximizing their uh, usage of fossil fuels. So why is it called flexibility? Because you need to have the flexibility to but maybe buy from the utility, mm -hmm. maybe buy from a renewable source. Mm -hmm. Wind power is it one to look at, but you can't use wind power if the wind's not blowing. So then... If you, if you have, to have the flexibility, then you need to store the energy. So you need battery storage. So you're starting to combine different energy sources from the utility, from renewables, storing as a battery storage. You're also seeing e-mobility charging connected to the, to the building and how you monitor, control, and how you use power. This is that flexibility component. Um, but, but the key to flexibility is you have to have some type of storage, you know, on site. And then in some parts of the world, we're, we're even seeing in hydrogen, you know, uh, come into play. And then the as service part is no different than what I described earlier. They're paying for the use of, of that energy. And if it's done in a, um, in a proper way, in a sustainable way, you can actually pay for it less. So you, you get the savings and you uh, decarbonize at the same time. Yeah, right. And that's one of the most exciting use cases because we see, uh, we talked uh, in a different episode, but also we see around in the industry so much there, companies are setting themselves decarbonization goals. And this can't just be achieved by switching off one thing and switching on another. That flexibility is such an important part. And you mentioned the mobility there with uh, they're less decarbonization goals. We see so many major auto manufacturers also setting themselves an e-mobility target for their actual production, which is going to be, become a really huge part of the infrastructure, the energy scope that we look at. Uh, I'd love to know if you have an example for this because uh, you know, we just talked about a lot of things, renewables, on-site storage, maybe even on-site generation, our, our normal fossil fuel or, or energy purchasing from a, a utility, e-mobility all combined. Do you have an example of somewhere where, where you, you've done something like this and, and what effect it has on, on the customer really trying to achieve those goals? Yeah, we do. We have a number of examples. One is a, a smart hop hospital project. Uh, Brauhofen Hospital, if I said that correctly. It sounds good to me. Yeah, um, but um, this is a uh, smart hospital, which energy is a flexibility. So we are deploying um, renewable energy and we were deploying battery storage. And so we are enabling the hospital to be able to use power the most effective way, whether that's from the utility at a low price point or whether that's through energy storage from utilities, you know, based on either wind conditions, sun conditions. And so we're giving the hospital that flexibility to, uh, to use that energy. And then maybe not directly related to that example, we're also seeing other smart hospital and smart office projects where e-mobility is being connected to the infrastructure. So they're able to charge the e-mobility stations off of the storage that they might have achieved through a renewable power source. So this gives the charging a flexibility from renewable energy um, as well. And then a real simple one, which um, they're doing in the, in the US, by the way, is with the Ford Motor Company, mm -hmm. uh, where we have partnered with Ford with our e-charging um, infrastructure. And I don't, I don't know if you read about this, but the, the vehicle will actually be an energy source for the home, you know, if the power goes out, you know, yeah. if you have a brownout or, or et cetera. So again, you can probably imagine, wow, I can charge my home or, or leverage my truck sitting in my driveway to power my home if there's energy power. So these are just some of the examples of flexibility that we're seeing. And, and that use case that you describe using e-mobility as almost a, an on-site storage uh, also replicable not just for residential but also for a hospital when uh, you know that your car park is full during the day you can use this as a you know these are the kinds of 
applications that until we reach this, we reach now as a society, this critical mass and e-mobility is somehow a norm. We couldn't have even imagined this being an option three, five years ago. Yeah, absolutely. And it, it, the other thing to think about, too, is a lot of customers, especially industrials, they all have decarbonization goals, but they also want to be have their business be resilient. You know, they need a resilient business and they also need energy security. So you start combining these value propositions of business resiliency, which basically means how can I keep my business up and running, especially in certain parts of the world? Maybe not so much in Europe, but you get into the U.S. and you get into Asia where you have these big natural disasters where it can knock out uh, the power grid for a number of weeks and months. Mm -hmm. Your business goes offline and it's it's a big problem. So business resiliency, business energy, uh, this flexibility also comes into play with that as well. And then this is where technology is important because who's making those decisions of where to use power from, when to store power, when to run the renewables. I mean, so you have to have some uh, analytics and some forecasting ability to make help make these decisions. And then the technology to take the action as well. So linked into that energy uh, infrastructure as well to make those decisions. Yeah. Hey, this is a this is a tough one. How important is it uh, when we talk about uh, companies trying to reach their their decarbonisation goals as a society, us trying to to have a solid impact on on our kind of uh, let's call it our impact on the environment? How important are these kinds of approaches, that flexibility, to actually enable us to do that? Yeah. Well, I, I look. I think it's it's absolutely essential. And let me tell you why I feel that way, because everybody wants to do that. You know, everybody, everybody wants to say the right thing, whether it's save the planet, whether it's decarbonize, but how many people have really done it, you know? And, and then you ask, then why haven't they done it? Well, maybe the business case hasn't been there, you know, and, and, or, or in some cases, maybe it, it, not even the business case, not there, but it costs more than it did before to, uh, to decarbonize. And so the technologies and the flexibility is dramatically improving that business case. And so what that is doing is that is helping consumers and decision makers and companies make those decisions to really decarbonize, which I think we all agree that we need to do for uh, the future of our you know, society and our planet. So I think without the technology, it becomes a story and some people will do it, but we, will not, we would not see the, uh, the implementation as fast as uh, uh, without it. I understand. And also linking back to that X as a service without putting those technologies into the context of the outcome and really setting clear goals for that outcome. It makes it more difficult as a business to make these decisions. Yeah, well, it makes it makes a decision, it makes a decision easier for them because they know they're going to pay based on the outcome and the, and the usage. But it also is critical because they don't have the capital to outlay for the infrastructure that will benefit them sometimes 15, 20, 30 years you know, they have a hard time, you know, putting that, um, that capital uh, up front. And uh, a lot of companies are looking for, you know, two, three year internal rate of returns, you know, paybacks. And so it's, it, this X as a service speeds up the deployment of, of, of these technologies and the value add, um, which is, is what ne we need to you know, make happen. Yeah, absolutely. And we did just deep dive a little bit into flexibility as a service or, and, and energy linked together with that. But as you mentioned, there's so many different use cases around in, employee experience, around automation or safety as a service. Do you have another favorite out of all that list of, of X as a service? Do you have a favorite X above and beyond flexibility? <laughs> I got a lot in my personal life, you know, I, I use it a lot for, you know, entertainment and gaming and, you know, and all of that. But, um, but from a business perspective, um, yeah, I think, I think my favorite right now is around our service business, um, and our data driven services, because we're able to deploy, you know, asset performance as a service. And we're real, we're able to put our uh, digital analytics on top of assets in buildings fan systems, pumps, boilers, chillers, and this will utilize the Building X platform. So great collaboration with um, our BP colleagues, but we're enabled to help our customers, you know, preserve their assets, predict when something's going to fail. And just imagine how important that is, like in a semiconductor plant, if a semiconductor plant goes down every 15 minutes is 1.5 million, or in a hospital, if an OR goes down or you get poor ventilation, you know, during a surgery, and so we're able to deploy these services to extend their assets, reduce their operating cost, and reduce their energy costs at the same time, and do it fairly quickly. So from a business perspective, this, uh, I think this is my, my favorite right now. And then that's 
that's really neck and neck with the whole energy as a service because yeah. this whole market is, is evolving pretty quickly and through our EPS business, um, energy and performance service business, this has really um, is, is given us some tailwinds to uh, grow this business in the marketplace. Yeah, absolutely. And and both those examples that you used when you're linking with energy, uh, not only to to deliver that energy flexibility, but the resilience, like you talked about, ensuring that we can continue to operate our, our operation is it is continuous where it's required, but then that link also to a semiconductor plant that today in the current market, we can't afford any semiconductor plant to, to be <laughs> offline at any point. But, uh, that's, but that's, that's true. <laughs> but as you say, a, a hospital at these examples, uh, that's the beauty of, of these kinds of digital driven and, and service based approaches, because you can deploy this more easily, can deploy this and, and, and speed up the rollout. Uh, and and scale, uh, which is around sustainability or around resilience and energy, something that we absolutely need to do as an industry. Yeah, good good comment. In reference to the semiconductor. Yeah, that's a pretty pain point right now. But my personal preference, to say no, was my uh, Apple Music subscription. So yeah. I get the whole library that's of all the, the music for nine bucks, nine yeah. bucks a month, and I love music. Right. So uh, yeah, I, I'm a, I'm an Apple Music. I'm not a Spotify, but it's the same thing, you know. You never thought about it when I grew up. You know, you'd go and buy a record, right, or you buy a CD, and now you have the full library of all of the music for you know, you know nine bucks a month. So it's pretty pretty cool. Pretty amazing, and and you know you don't have to go too far back before we all had a box of records or a box of CDs, and giving those up was a pretty tough one. But uh, but it's changed the way that we do business. When we talk about music, it's changed the way we listen. I listen to more more stuff and different stuff than I ever would have if I had to go and buy a CD. Absolutely. What's uh, what's on the playlist at the moment? What's at the top of the the top of the list? Oh, yeah. I like I like different music. I mean, I, I'm a little hesitant of saying this, but I you know, I like uh, um, I'm a big fan of Dua Lipa right now. Cool. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Big fan of Dua Lipa. I like a little rap, the good rap. Yeah. Yeah. I like a John Mellicamp. Yeah. So I like a, I like a variety. Hey, yeah. this, is a, this is the part of the beauty, right? It is. And you, you, don't you mentioned to, it. Yeah. 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 And you can download it and listen to it on the plane or listen to it in the car and all the rest yeah. of it. This is also the beauty of the energy as a service. Customers can get a little battery storage and get a little renewable. Like they can it. get a little, little flexibility. One, one day it will be just as easy. I like it. <laughs> hey, Dave, thanks so much right. for the conversation. Really enjoyed it. Uh, and, and again, I think you know, we took that deep dive into one of these individual X's as a service around the flexibility. But hey, there's so many more and such an important thing for us as an industry to scale. So I get the feeling that maybe we talk about some more in the future, I hope. It'll be evolving. So bring it on. See you next time. Absolutely. All right. And thank you all for joining us. So uh, please remember to like, comment, share this episode, subscribe to us, whether you're watching the video on YouTube or you're listening to us through one of your pot, uh, your podcast platforms, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, hard to know. Don't, uh, don't have a preference, at least for this one. We're not going to sign a, a, an exclusive deal with Spotify for $100 million anytime soon. So please uh, remember to, to uh, subscribe, look out for new episodes in the near future. And otherwise, thank you very much for joining us and we'll see you soon.